I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Call to Coach, re recorded on September 9th, 2016. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have uh, questions during the live webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video window here. Just, just go down there. You'll see a video window in the bottom left-hand corner. There is a button that says log in, select that, choose the guest account and put your name where it says guest, take those numbers out of there, and then hit submit and uh, that will put you in the chat room. We will take live questions during our program today and uh, so you can get, get, get those in during the chat room. If you're listening to the recorded version or have questions about custom strings coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, contact us via email. Just send that to us, coaching at gallop.com. Really, that account, uh, will, well, we can handle any of your questions there. You can also use the contact form that's right there on the live page. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallopstrengthcenter.com. For all your coaching resources and strengths finder training needs, you can also catch the video on both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening, and like I mentioned in the pre-show, we have lots, uh, almost 200 videos that are available for you out there as well. All the links to our mobile apps as well as the top five that you can get now. Actually, we just updated the iPhone and Android coming up here for the, our Strengths Finder mobile apps. All available at the Coach's blog. Just go to coaching. Gallup.com. Jeremy Petrosini is our host today. He works as a senior learning and development consultant here at Gallup. I almost never get to see him anymore, and so, Jeremy, it's always <laughs> great to have you on Call the Coach. Welcome. Jim, great to, great to be here. And again, those of you that are regular listeners, welcome back. Those of you who are new, we're glad you're, you're part of this movement. Again, uh, we now have over, gosh, 14.7 million people that have completed uh, Clifton Strengths, know at least their top five, are kind of on that journey to be the best version of themselves that they can be. And it's part, it's part of Gallup's mission and goal to, to hit a billion people. You know, there's seven billion on the planet, so uh, reaching a billion is part of our passion. And we know we can't do that. Um, on our own, it's not just about people taking an assessment, but it's about people, again, really unleashing their talents and strengths. So it's it's the network of coaches like yourselves out there that we really hope to have a million coaches to help us reach those billion people. So we're excited today to be uh, back together. And um, Maureen Monty is one of our, our guest coaches um, on the show today. She's been a, a past guest as well and um, recently launched just here in the last few months. Uh, but had launched her first book uh, called Destination Unstoppable. And um, some great stories in that. We're going to get to hear from Maureen today, just kind of talking about how she's leveraged her own coaching um, business practice, really on the focus of teams. So those are both teams. Um, I like the way, Maureen, you say it on the website, both kind of from the locker room to the conference room. But whether it's actual sports teams and some great phenomenal stories she has to share of, of teams and coaches and individual um, uh, team members and kind of the success that they've had kind of knowing their own strengths, but also kind of carrying that into the team setting in work environments. So Maureen, we're excited to have you with us today. Oh, thank you, Jeremy and Jim. Thank you. You know how deeply honored I am to be here. I consider Gallup and, and you guys in particular my strategic partners, and I love you both. That's awesome. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah, Maureen, you and I, we were able to connect when you went through Gallup's entrepreneurial coaching training. So you've gone through all the strength certification, the entrepreneurial training, um, really kind of took that risk of moving from successful corporate career to going, all right, I'm stepping out of my own and, and launching uh, my own coaching business. But share with the listeners, I guess, just a little bit more about yourself and kind of your own journey of being called a coach. Oh, thank you. Well, yes. And on top of the uh, EP10 and Strength Finder certification, I've been to three, three Gallup Great Workplace Summits. Excellent. So at, when I was in the corporate world, that was the only way I could receive information on the Strength Finder, right, at that point. And so, um, and I recently spoke at the uh, Clifton Strength Summit, right? And I opened, which I was deeply honored to do, and I opened with the statement that before I knew my strengths, my life was filled with drama and potholes and I was always in trouble. And after I knew my strengths, my life was filled with drama, potholes, and I was always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but now I knew why, right? Yeah. And in yeah. fact, I realize now that I will create that kind of environment for myself. And I still do, frankly. Um, and my, my, I grew up on Strength Finder 
in teams. Um, I was exposed to it in my master's in leadership and business ethics in 2006 and instantly began using it with teams in my grad school program, which was almost all that was team based work. And um, so while I do coach individuals from the very beginning, my my experience has been with teams and the outcome of that has been my ability to build strong partnerships with team leaders and teams to help them be mm -hmm. successful. So I basically say I build winning teams and I start from the foundation of what's right about you. And you guys all know that that's the strength story. Um, my my value add isn't topic specific. So if I'm working with a medical executive team, I last time I did surgery was never. Right? right, and I have no plans to do surgery, <laughs> by the way. Um, so I focus on the what I call the human system of success. The formal system's there. They went to med school. I can't help them with that. But mm -hmm. what do we need from the human system to help them, the group, be successful? And, and most often, and this is true with the sports team that I worked with, the hockey team, the problem was not was not it was not that they had issues with hockey or they had issues with medical school stuff or medical things. They have team chemistry issues. So I believe all teams struggle and that the best there's untapped talent on every team and the best way to overcome that struggle is to discover the talent on the team, align it with success, and that's how people reach Destination Unstoppable. It is not a place, it is a mindset, a heightened energy focused on belief in one another, the fact that they they know they can win, they know how good they are, and um, just basically bring that human side to it. That's awesome. Uh, Maureen, real quick to remind uh, the, the listeners of your top five. Oh, ideation. Yep. That's my biggest troublemaker. Um, <laughs> strategic, learner, achiever, individualization. And I also own Maximizer because I've taken it twice and Maximizer came in my top five too. Yeah. I noticed that we could talk about that uh, throughout the conversation too, but I noticed in, in the book, you don't limit it just to top five. Um, you've got some charts that have six, which may throw people yes. off to go, wait a minute. <laughs> How did yeah. you get a 16? So, or hence, or you know, Disruptor was my number one EP10 thing. Ideation, so it's all connected to um, no boxes as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah, and as you know, and I'll just share this for the other coaches listening, the, the ability for both individuals and coaches to access beyond a top five, to see their top 10 or full 34, I like the way that you begin to integrate that in. Because again, knowing your dominant themes, which again, we say dominant is in a report for Strength Finder that says, you own your top seven or you own your top 12, but it's for you to say, this is who I am. Or maybe you've taken it multiple times and see that, that, you know, maximizer or woo show up and, yeah. and go, all right, how, which one of these, you know, play into who I am and, and what that looks like. Exactly. So let's, let's dive in a little bit. I'm going to hold up for people to see it here, but kind of, kind of your book, um, again, kind of this destination unstoppable. You so nicely kind of wove in the title of talking about that's where you want to take teams is kind of yes. on this destination where there truly is this collaboration. I love the way you talk about it too, primarily, again, in the book, talking about this hockey team that you had the ability to work with. Um, you know, you kind of went back and forth of, do I do it pro bono? <laughs> do I charge them? Do I, you know, it's a dilemma that many coaches out there face. Um, you kind of found that happy medium of saying there's cost involved, right? But what's the impact to them? And I love, again, the journey you took them on was that there was this sense of, and you just spoke to it, renewed energy, this, uh, that it's it's not I need to beat myself up or be stressed out when I screw up, but this this idea again is kind of there, there's optimism and energy and collaboration, even in the midst of struggle. But talk a little bit, I guess, about some of the key components of this book that you really intended again for teams to be able to walk away, or for us as coaches as we read it, for us to be able to take two teams. Great. Well, those are that's an excellent um, foundation you've laid for this discussion. You know, for me, the strength finder is where all roads begin, but it's not where they end. Right. Yeah. And so it's not just what you do with it as a company, but it's the the awareness in the team environment, especially. Most people take the strength finder and they go, Well, I knew that about myself. Okay. Did the guy sitting next to you or the woman sitting next to you know that about you? Does the do the other 25 members on your team know that about you? No. They don't because none of us communicate as well as the strength finder can help us communicate when we have all the information. So the, you know, the, the hockey team, um, when I got the opportunity, my first question was per, for me in my head was, is the coach the problem? Because if you have a, the captain of the Titanic who won't turn the ship, yep. that's a different problem than the, the people under him yep. are, are the leader are not on board. So my first wonderful conversation was discovering that he took ownership of that team's situation. They were very talented, but they were struggling. 
And he said, if the, I'm the maestro, if the maestro doesn't play the music, if the orchestra doesn't play, it's the maestro's fault. Mm -hmm. So I was already on board, right? So then deciding to charge was even harder because I wanted to do this very much. And, um, and I love sports. I've been involved in sports my whole life. I watch sports. I watched Serena Williams lose last night to a young lady from Czechoslovakia, and I'm going through what strengths are having issues, right? She's, <laughs> right. she's yeah. having issues. So, um, the, but the, the real value to the coach, uh, two days later, I was in the boys' locker room at, at, a, at a local high school, right? And yes, we were going to take the strength finder, and we had a very short runway to success. They had only six weeks from where they were to when the, the playoffs ended. Mm -hmm. So we talked about what success looks like and we invested in a team trust bank. And these are all the things that I bring to my coaching practice around the strength finder. Right. Um, so I encourage other coaches to figure out what those things are for them as well. Yep. Um, yep. I did grow up on strengths with teams. So I had, and I had years of experience of doing this prior to, to doing it with a hockey team, but it was important for me to help them understand that they didn't have a hockey problem. They had a people problem. They had a team mm -hmm. chemistry problem. Mm -hmm. And what I appreciate about working with sports teams is sports teams leaders uh, understand the importance of team chemistry to success. Um, I'm in Michigan. Michigan State University did very well last year in football. And uh, if you were to Google Mark D'Antonio, you would in January 1st or 2nd, I think it was the 2nd, he spoke about why they win and he said it's team chemistry. He didn't say anything else. It's team chemistry. So if I could get, what I try to do is get businesses to move towards the direction of focusing on the team chemistry side of teams. They, they hire for, you know, someone who can write code in Java. That's great. But what else does that person bring to the table? What does that doctor bring to the table? What does that accountant bring to the table? So with the boys, we went, uh, we talked about what the issues were and what success looked like. And um, they defined their own success statement, which I have all teams do if they're willing to do it. Then they took the strength finder. And that's when I began to see why there are issues. When you have 18 out of 22 or 25 people with competition, you are going to have issues. <laughs> and so I'd never seen a team wired like that with so much influencing strength overall and then just total competition, right? Yeah. So even just helping them, all I had them do is stand up if you had empathy. Nobody had empathy. Stand up if you have belief. Nobody had belief. Stand up if you have achiever. And some people stood up and then I said, stand up if you have competition. And the whole room stands up. And they- so you were guiding them, Maureen, knowing they didn't have those themes. Yes, I did know they didn't have <laughs> I do a lot of analysis with teams. Right. Uh, I've got- tool that does a lot, gives me a lot of data. We don't have that. We don't have no. that. We've got lots of this. We've yeah. got lots of this. And yeah. they, then they were like, ding, you know, the light bulb goes on. Yeah. And so the journey was really um, helping them see who they were and then coach helping them find a role for each person on the team on and off the ice. Yeah. Right. So that was and six weeks later, their state champs, which is besides the point. When I interviewed each boy after of the seven or eight that are in the book, not a single one talked about the win. When I said, what's most memorable, they all spoke about that joy of becoming that destination unstoppable team, that momentum. They were unbeatable. The last uh, 11 games after we worked together, they had 11 more games. They outscored the competition 67 to 16 goals. Wow. They crushed them. <laughs> right? It was never in doubt as the, the further along went. So anyhow, it was very joyful. Yeah. Well, and I love that piece too. And I like that you say almost kind of the win was secondary. But when we talk about strengths, and again, you and I, have, you and I have collaborated on this, and Jim, you've heard this a million times from different different coaches that we bring on the show. It's it's this element again that it's not just a feel good. It's not just a, isn't this fun to know your strengths. It drives performance. Right. The beauty is when it when it's driving performance, the the win almost becomes secondary because what it does to you personally, or you or I, or the individual players, what it does to them personally in that on or off the ice piece. And I know for you with with this coach or other coaches or other leaders in business, when we can shift from the focus being the win or getting the project done to developing the person, it's 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 a game changer day and night. And I want to I want to go back. I know you talked about for you, you wanted to figure out pretty early on where's the coach coming from or is the coach the problem? Yeah. Um, I love that you know coach kind of said, hey, if I'm the maestro, um, I've got a pretty important role. So he was willing to own that. Talk about that a little bit, because I know with Gallup's millennial research, we've been talking a lot that millennials want the feedback. They want not the boss per se in business. They want the coach. And I think immediately, if you're like me, my initial reaction was, oh, they want the cheerleader and rah, rah, and you're, you're doing a good job. That's not what they're saying. When we actually dig into millennials, if any of us you know that played sports or watch sports, a coach is not a cheerleader. 
-hmm. coach is not just all rah-rah, but a coach is also different than the owner of the team that sits in the skybox, maybe making notes, and at the end of the season says, here's what you did right or wrong. I think too many of us in manager roles have become the owner of the team. We become the boss instead of the coach that's on the sidelines, giving feedback mm -hmm. in the moment, calling a timeout or halftime. Here's what we need to talk about. Talk about kind of that importance, I guess, of, of that coaching role, both in sports or how, how you've seen um, sports coaches approach it with kind of that developmental role versus maybe what's missing more in business or you've tried to inter interject in a business that could really transform the way we lead. Uh, those, those are great points and a great question. Um, I'm, work I'm working with a customer right now uh, who's a previous strength finder taker but we're going back now and actually making better use of it, right? Yeah. They have 40 managers and I keep emphasizing to them that they don't need to be an expert. They're so free. They have to be an expert on strengths. I'm like, you do not have to be an expert on strengths. Now you need to develop a general understanding of the language right. and, and that can come over time. The, the employee has to be the expert on themselves. Uh, they, yeah. Not their mom, not their boss. They need to know who they are. So help them through the dialogue about strengths and what success in the role looks like. It's a dialogue. It's the quality of the dialogue that matters, not mm -hmm. that you must know every single strength out there because mm -hmm. they're a little bit panicked, frankly. I don't mm -hmm. think they even understand their own strengths yet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's part of the journey is saying each of us own our own destiny. Our strengths can help us understand who we are and how to use that more successfully in a role. But the conversation is the critical part. Be willing to have the conversation. Don't be afraid of the conversation. If you've got learner and you don't have woo, use learner to explore that that person sitting across from you. And do right? sports coaches seem to get that quicker? That the So here's my theory on sports coaches in the general. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what 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 they do better than business leaders is they they are not willing to put a chihuahua in the leader dog for the blind school. Mm -hmm. That's not twelve. It's not going to lead a dead right. a blind person across yeah. the road. Okay, yeah. don't do that to them. Right. Yeah. Well, the sports people are better at saying are noticing what people are good at yeah. and putting them in a role to be successful. What's your unique talent? And it's a yes or no, not a well. Let's let's try it out. <laughs> yeah, and they don't take Usain Bolt and say, you know what, you'd be a better hundred meter dash person if you ran the marathon. Yeah. Right. They help them hone in on what they're great at. Right. So I think part of that is I think many of the really great coaches have individualization mm. and they're willing to um, invest in them as individuals and see them as individuals. So but I think the intent from the beginning is different mm -hmm. and it, it is to win, but it is through they get it. They understand that by deeply understanding and appreciating and valuing all the talent on the team and putting that to use is the way to get the best performing team. And yeah. it's one and lost in the locker room sometimes. It's yeah. one and lost on the people side, yeah. right? Yeah. Any number of outstanding stars, whether it's business or, or sports, who fall apart because they don't have any of that human stuff working around them, yeah. right? Yeah. So translate that from the locker room then to the conference room, mm -hmm. right? So you're saying like coaches tend to kind of get that. There's, again, any of us that have played sports, there's a chemistry piece, a team piece. We see, and again, Gallup talks about people join companies, they leave managers. You know, the same thing. You think back to a, a team that won, you go, how much of it was about the coach? Was about this chemistry that that right. they helped foster or create? Mm -hmm. Trans, translate that, that ben, back to maybe an example you have with business leaders you've worked with. We're in the conference room now. They may go, well, this isn't a team. This isn't supposed to be fun. This is work. It's called work. What? How do you help <laughs> them to begin to think and act like a coach and create that that chemistry where they know my strengths and they let me play to my strengths. So when I hear that kind of conversation, I know we need to work on that person first. Yeah. Right. So um, it, it, it is individual and I do have individualization. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? It's about the maestro you're saying at that, that point. It is. And so I, I like to help the maestro understand how good it feels to be understood. Mm. Okay. And because often there are people that are not, that have their own strength issues and are perhaps misunderstood or misjudged or it's not well regulated or all the other problems that come with it right and sometimes it's gender if you have a woman with uh, a woman leader with command and significance and um maximizer and self-assurance that may, may may or may not be as well received as a man with those same talents right mm -hmm. so helping them i always focus on effectiveness i rarely focus on the right thing to do for your employee because they don't hear the right thing to do 
they hear, but they do care about effectiveness. I, who wants to, who raises their hand when they say, they get asked the question, I don't want to be effective at work. Everybody wants to be effective. They may not care if they're well-liked. They may not care if, uh, if they get all the credit, but they do want to be seen as effective. So mm -hmm. I often start with effect effectiveness in terms of when I'm trying to help the leader understand why this is a worthy investment for him or her to understand not just in their, some, themselves, but the team around them. So um, it does require a different focus and sometimes different language, but I'll bring sports into it when I can, right? Tell me about the best sports team you ever loved or saw, or tell me about the, less, the best team you ever saw. Mm. Were you ever part of a team that reaches full potential? No. Okay, let's build a team that reaches at full potential. Wouldn't that be fun? So. Yeah, I love, I love that. And again, it kind of goes back to starting with the leader. Do they really get it? Are they listening, like you said? Are they identifying the strengths of, of individuals? And then pulling that out. And I love just kind of taking it back to the sports analogy, the team. Like there's so many people that have played sports or watch sports yeah. to realize we need to be an intact team, not just individual contributors that show up. In yeah, the you know, that's you're exactly correct. And the only other thing I would add to that that I think happens uh, when I work with teams, it's kind of an aha moment sometimes is the idea of their own strengths lens. And I often use, and I use it in the book, um, if I'm hiring fishermen, I've got a dolphin and an eagle. They both catch fish. Dolphin mm -hmm. and eagles both catch fish, mm -hmm. but they may not understand each other's lens at all. I love that. Right. Yeah. So helping them see that that the person that maybe they see as a problem child is has just an entirely different lens. I think an eagle might look at a dolphin and say they they never shut up and everyone likes them and they're really not that all that smart. <laughs> and the, the the dolphin looks at the eagle and says, "Why don't you try saying hello and stop glaring at me?" Right. <laughs> so yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, I love that. Again, different different ways to get you know, the same task or same outcome, but really appreciating that both have a unique lens. Talk about that too. I know in the book, um, and you've got some great examples where again, really simple team grids that we've all, or many of us that have played around with strengths have created. So we look at here are Mar Marine's top five or six, and here are Jeremy's themes, and here are Jim's themes, but you took it to another level. So I know in our coaching training, we, we try to invite people that when they're coaching individuals, they need to take them on a journey from naming. So what are my top five themes and what do I call these talents or strengths to claiming it as my own, but kind of put it in your own words. And then the third piece is aiming so I can do something with it. I feel like you kind of discovered, and I know I shared that with you earlier, um, but just a simple way. I know you, if I caught it right, you said it's a summary of strengths statement, right? Is that my, am I referencing that right? Talk a little bit about that for how you help them to kind of own who they are and kind of putting it in their own words versus, versus just gallop you know, Gallup language. Yeah, I, I, even though the insight guide is wonderful and customized, it's still long. Yep. And so I it's often, a right? it's, it's a starting point. point and it's a, um, it's about all about you, but summarizing those statements into one, if you knew my strengths, you'd know that I blank. Okay. Um, that's, that's part of all my journeys with individuals and teams. Um, what Coach Weidenbach, and he deserves so much credit. I, I, hope, I hope coaches will, will purchase this book for, the, for watching Coach Weidenbach mm. be just the best leader, one of the best leaders I've ever worked with, and helping each kid come up with a role for that team, right? And so the third string goalie, for example, um, who's never going to see the light of day, was one of the few that had, there was not a lot of relating talent on that team, and there's very little thinking talent on the team, so compared to normal. And um, so helping that third string goalie who had harmony have a role in the locker room mm. that um, he, he, he embraced that wholeheartedly. And so he's called Nolan the harmonizer in my book, right? And then there's Jake the thinking man and um, Mason the energy guy. So owning it beyond those words, right? Yes, 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 Nolan had harmony and so therefore the harmonizer. But what Coach did beyond that was by, by publicly saying, going boy by boy and saying, yeah, you've got competition, what else are you gonna bring to this table, yeah, right? right? And then Nolan being third string goalie, not a senior, um, when he, when Coach said, can you uh, interject when Bill and John are fighting? Okay. And, and Nolan said, I can. And he said, you can, but will you? And he said, I will. And what that did when it, it was done in front of everybody else on the team was, if Nolan speaks up, I expect you to listen to him like he's a captain. Yep. This is his, this is his territory. Power. Yep. Yeah, he did, he right? right? And yeah. so that's part of the journey. But I have other clients. You know, I've got um, a client who's an, an executive who has context, and his boss, the vice president or something, has futuristic. So those two often see the world very differently. And so now they just refer to him as Lincoln. 
right? Hmm. And they have their own name for her. And so it is not unusual for my clients to come up with names for themselves based on their, on their strengths. And I think that's great because that's how you own it, right? So uh, aside from them owning it themselves, what else is powerful about that? You are, you are helping people understand what to expect from you. Yeah. And so it's the other's awareness. That's the benefit to the team, right? Yeah. Um, the other's awareness in, improves. And, and you also know what you don't do well and how they can make your world complete. I talk in the book about my diplomacy checker because he has harmony and I do not. And he said at one point when I worked with him and he was part of the company I was with, um, he said, you know, Microsoft Word has a grammar checker and a spell checker, but it doesn't have a diplomacy checker. And you need a diplomacy checker. And so I invited them him to be my diplomacy checker. And from then on, I would introduce him as such. And when I did, that let both the people around him know that he had an immense talent to build common ground, practical, move forward conversation, and not to expect diplomacy from me. Yeah. And I love it because even though, like, you know, Nolan the Harmonizer has harmony, it's not just about that one theme. It's about the other components with that. So finding these, and I think I shared with you, you know, several of my clients have have even taken it to that step. We do that best of me activity and they start saying, here's you can count on me and here's right. what I do. And it's a little bit of them saying, here's who I am. But when the team can synthesize it or the person can synthesize it. And again, there's a lot of different activities, tools we've introduced, whether it's picture cards, but that language and that, that imagery of this is who I am and what I do, it gets back to what you said in the beginning, on and off the ice. Yeah. So we're often what we do and going back to Nolan, you'd go, third string goalie, that's his title, that's his role. Well, now right. he's limited to, will I ever play? I guess I suit up and I sit and I wait. In but the game. You, yeah, he in the game. plays in practice, but, when but you, that's, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you go, well, what if you're more than that? What if we're more if than we're the more job than title? And I think this is where, again, even at parties where you go, what do you do? We share our job title and you go, no, it'd almost be better to say, what are your, what are your strengths? What are, what are you passionate about? Go Jeremy, ahead, hang on. on. Yeah, yeah, hang on one sec. We'll get Maureen back. She'll, yeah. she'll dial back in here in just a second. I will say, uh, when we think about, I think the beauty in the book, when when we put those very simple labels uh, on ourselves, so to yeah. speak, I am the harmonizer or I am the maximizer. In their situation, you know, they had six weeks or so to get to the playoffs. And those simple labels help them get there faster than if we try to get complicated schemes you know, if, 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 you know, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go down to my top 12 and we're going to pull all these things back in and we're going to make these complicated labels. Um, Maureen, I'm filling in for you while, while, while you, Thank were you. Out, so. I, I got disconnected or something happened. Yeah, I it just know. dropped. You, you it's okay. I, I was just, okay. I was just mentioning that I, I felt like in the book, when you gave these labels, these, these descriptors, these very simple constructs, on people to give them a, a single purpose. And that doesn't mean that's the only thing they can do, but in a short time span, you needed results quickly. And so to go with one thing, I thought this was brilliant, go with one thing that you can work on right now and make a difference on was powerful because it gave, like you said, it gave the team permission to be those people and to yeah. do it fast. You didn't have, in, a, in an enterprise setting, we might have a year or two to work mm -hmm. on people and really dig in. And I actually, I, I, I advise against even digging in too deep in those situations. We almost need to get those quick labels on, on people and say, how can I, that's the low hanging fruit. How can I make an impact today? Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, and that's the that's the piece of where I was going to Maureen is what it did for Nolan in the moment is it wasn't just a in practice or if I'm needed kind of if the if the kind of the situation arises where we got to pull in that that you know that second string isn't isn't doing it third string we yeah. go, right, you know you know all of a sudden that that chaos in the locker room piece well that's going to happen very frequently so you go, and with somebody with harmony they see it before it even comes to that's action. right. So that purpose that it gave him, and again, on and off the ice, not just with the team, but with his friends, with his family, in his career, in college, it's like, it just moves it, as you're saying, Jim, beyond the five words on paper, or like you said, organizations that we've taken Strength Finder, or we use that tool. We move yeah. it from tool to this is part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And again, so much connecting that being to doing is Kurt Lee's old always talk about that soul to role. Don't just make right. it about the job title but make it about who you are. Marina, no, that is, oh, I think, let me, let me ask you this question. And I, I don't know how you came up with this, but I think you have this great lexicon of your own. You own it. Each one of the themes has this short two or three word definition. Yeah. Uh, learner, 
you would say this, maximize, and you say it that way every time, right? Mm -hmm. You came up with, a, I think that's such a brilliant way as a coach to kind of get a handle on these 34 themes and have this, and it doesn't have to be yours. It should be what, how you understand that, right, based on your coaching. How, how key and how strategic was that as these kids were learning that you could quickly come up with these two or three word phrases that described that? theme of learner or that theme of maximizer? Yeah, that's a great, great question. And frankly, it goes all the way back to when I was working with teams and very quickly had to get lots of people up to speed on what the, the words meant, right? What the names that the themes meant. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've had that same list for eight years, right? And so everybody gets the list and, uh, and then they look at the list because it's all on one page. And when, if somebody says they have, you know, consistency and nobody knows what that means, they look at consistency and we have at least a place to start. Right. So that was important to me uh, so that I could bring people up to speed quickly and have just a one page short phrase that that it's, it was mine, you know, and they're not all perfect. And I have changed them over time as I've improved my understanding, too. Yeah. No, I, I think it's strategic in those conversations when you're having these, when you, you had got two opportunities to meet with the, with these kids and not yeah. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And so you had to have those quickly. Okay. This is that, this means this boom, you've got it in and they're understanding very quickly. I found that I think uh, throughout the story beneficial to their understanding, they could claim it so much faster knowing, yeah, okay, right. this boils down to this and we're going to put this, you know, we're going to go this way. And so, yeah. you know, I that's applaud you. I think that's a great coaching strategy is to have each one of those themes and kind of your own, Hey, this is what this means. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that sped up the adoption a lot quicker. I think you're absolutely correct. And that, that is the point of, of doing it that way. And also having one place in one easy place. Um, I do want to talk about Nolan for one more second. Um, so Nolan Rogo is now going to Michigan State for his first year. So he played on that team two years ago when I worked with him. I worked with the team again last year and they went to the final four. They'd lost 14 seniors and they almost won the state championship again. Mm -hmm. And this time, this time Nolan played, right? He, he was the uh, part of the platoon, two goalies mostly played. And, but I, here's, here's the cool, the coolest thing of all is he, when he learned his strengths and began to see that his success, he could count on them to drive yeah. success. Yeah. He became the most uh, sought after guy to solve human problems on the team. Yeah. And he, go, he won the coach's award, which is the best teammate hmm. award. And I'm telling you, to get a coach's award from Coach Weinbach, man, I would, <laughs> that's better than the Olympic gold. I'm sorry. All Ryan Lock, <laughs> Lochte or whatever his name is, let's set aside. Um, and, uh, but he, to this day, when Coach has a question about a kid who's still on the team, he calls no one. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. You know? So then other boys have continued to leverage them. One kid worked at a golf store over the summer and he's like, I use my woo all the time, you know? So it's just, just fabulous. I love these kids. Yeah. Again, if at our, at the core of coaching is helping people discover who they are right. and then to help them develop, to become the best version of themselves they could be. It's again, it's not just about the win on the ice. It's, it's so much more than that. And I love again for, Nolan for the team for the coach to see okay who's who's the next kid on the team and not we need yeah. to find the next harmonizer yeah. but who's somebody that's going to probably even approach it different and unique because right. of who they are and the uniqueness they bring yeah it's really fun coach is all in coach Weidenbach and I am too and as far as I'm concerned we can do this for the rest of our lives every year hockey season it. starts <laughs> I love it. Jim are there question, questions out there other questions I know you know Maureen well and have spent time with her and with the book as well so I'd yeah, yeah, Maureen. Now, out in chat. Mm -hmm. you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I want to bring it back up again in the trust bank, mm -hmm. and how that this as I was reading the book, this was an aha moment for me in realizing that uh, in our interactions in life have an enormous impact on what we do. Can you talk when you say trust bank? Can you talk a little bit about what that means and and how you explain that to the team with their interactions? Yeah, um, I use the analogy, and this this is. You know, it's, it's similar to your um, human sigma, right? And uh, between a client and an employee, it's either great, it either goes up or down, it's never neutral, right? So I use the idea of a waitress, right? If you're ready to order and the waitress comes over and she's not the least bit interested in what you're really, and you ask questions, you get yes, no answers, and, you know, the food's never delivered on time, and, and you wave, wave them down, you know, the experience part of it. So I said, that's detracting from the trust bank. If that same person were to be all in on your experience as a diner at that restaurant, your trust bank goes up. And so I talked to them about, from here on out, the rest of the season, there's a trust bank. And everything you do to one another and with one another either invests 
in the experience you're having together or it withdraws from it. And I came up with some examples of what an you know, a investment would look and what a withdrawal would look like. And they continued along that path. And um, there were kids who said that one thing. And I said to Coach Weidenbach, the team that enters that locker room the first time we meet, before we even did Strength Finders, will not be the same team that leaves. And they weren't. The Strength Finder added to it, but by we'd done the strengths, we'd done the trust bank, we'd done I believe in, I believe in one, I refuse to let you fail. We had done the success statement. We built that all in 45 minutes. That's a lot of ground to cover with these kids, yeah. right? And that's, but that's what's possible. And um, so all of that was part of them holding one another accountable for the rest of the season to remain engaged and invested in one another. Yeah, and our version of that, which is so beautiful, is the dipper in the bucket. And I, we, we every interaction we're either we're putting drops or we're dipping from it, right? right? Uh, from that standpoint, it just be, it came very clear to me that every, especially uh, in this scenario, that every interaction matters, and that we're either adding to or taking away. And that was such a clear and simple, and I think for teenagers and maybe even us adults too, uh, such a clear example of like. In this interaction, am I adding value to it or am I stripping it away in yeah. what we're doing here? And, that, and, and in a team setting, uh, that's just so important that, you know, in, in that we do that. And I think if that's another one of those easy things as a team, if we're struggling, is to check those things that we say to each other. And it's mm -hmm. an easy check to say, is this adding value or is it taking away from it? Yeah. And, uh, and that alone, can the, the positive conversations that begin in a team, you, I think, in the book outlined some of the afterwards, some of the dialogue that took place where you got feedback on that, right? Mm -hmm. You saw those kids begin to encourage each other, right, in that, yeah. in that setting? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it was, um, some of it was in the moment as they learned, even the buzz in the room after our first session, 45 minutes, you could feel that there was a different energy than when I than when I came in, and then when we did the strengths and they um, were able to uh, converse with one another about their different strengths, review the insight guide. Um, I had each of them build like a secret sauce statement. What is what are the three things you do better than anybody else, and what strengths? Mm -hmm. Which is a lot of ground to cover again in a two hour workshop, right? So, but the from that moment on, um, the two co captains said to me that. When people began to have their roles, each role that was accepted was 100 pounds lifted off their shoulders. And by the time they, that it came around to them, they were just so relieved to not to have to fix all the problems on the team, right? And, you know, Coach Weinbach said he didn't have on that team, he didn't have a, a brave heart or a general patent. And, and he felt that's what he needed. And what I, my favorite point about one of the conclusions of the book was we didn't need general patent. We didn't need Braveheart. We needed a fully valued and understood Austin Elger and Mason Schultz and Nolan Rogo and Blake Rogo and down the line. That's what we needed. And when we had that, they were unstoppable. So that, that what we helped do with Strength Finder being part of it was create that shared mindset. What success looks like, we're all in. Trust bank, I refuse to let you fail. And that series of things just took off. They had all the hockey talent they needed. They were, they were old for their age. They were 14 seniors. They were big. They were talented. Uh, they had everything they needed. All we did was fix the rest of the human side of it a little bit. Yeah. One of the things uh, we, I hear sometimes, a little bit of pushback around sports is, yeah, but in sports, everybody has their assigned position that's mm -hmm. clearly defined. And in business, that's not always the case. And I, I want to challenge that thought a little bit because I think in business, sometimes it's even more defined. I, I think I work with software development teams and there's really four major roles when we think about software development. There's a architect, there's a project <laughs> manager, there's developers, and there's quality. And it, it sure you can divide and subdivide those out, but those have very well defining. You don't want your project managers writing code, and you don't necessarily want your architects bogged down in writing code. You want your coders coding, and you need direction from the architects. Right? It is really no. I, and you've you've been on both sides now. It's really no different digging in to, to active teams, whether they're in construction or they're in manufacturing or they're in software development. They all have defined roles all a part of the team, and right, it's that coach's or manager's job to dig in and figure out how, what is the best of this team and how do I put them in a position to succeed? Did you, you, you see both sides of that? You've done both in the corporate world and in the sports world. Yeah. Is, it that, is it that much different? No, uh, the biggest, some of it is role definition, but I think the biggest missing thing in the, between sports and in, in corporate world is the definition of success. If you ask a manager who has an employee who's a coder, what does success look like? And there's dead silence and nobody knows, mm -hmm. then it is, 
it is that's another problem. How are you ever going to hit it if you don't know what success looks like? And success, and this is I refuse to let the boys, when I said what does success look like, and they said win the state championship, I'm like, great. Does the how matter? Or, or do we just have to win? doesn't matter how we win, right? Well, of course the how matters. And so now you explore some of the human side of things and allow that to come in, which helps every person have a role. Because the boys talked about brotherhood and discipline and refusing to let one another fail and uh, focus and all this other stuff, that there's part of that that everyone can fit into, right? They're not going to fit into every piece of it. There yeah. were people that were not brotherhood people. There were others that were. We needed and, them. And Maureen, them. if I could chime in on this too, I'd love to hear more from you on not only the helping the team to define success, kind of out of the gates, right? Like you said, we need to... to Make sure we've got the right leader in place and where are they at? Are they open and receptive? So the maestro component is pretty key. But then very quickly with the team, what does success look like? You devoted a whole chapter, um, you know, chapter 18, what what the data showed. Yeah, so I felt like I had to. Yeah, it wasn't just right? even like, hey, aren't we all happier now? Or aren't we all, <laughs> now we know our strengths or we've got our strengths, superhero names. Yeah. But it proved results. And again, like you said, when you interviewed the boys, it, wasn't about the win as much as it was of what else happened, but the results were there. So were enormous. Talk about kind of this importance of defining success. So mm -hmm. even here it was win, win, win the state championship, and then the, the ability or our duty almost as coaches consultants to help quantify that or help the team to quantify that and bring yeah. it. Up. Yeah, and this is where I think you know my I do have I do feel like it's been helpful that I've had all this uh, experience in the corporate world. Right, I'm not afraid of any single person at any level or any topic. I feel like I've covered most of them. So I have no fear, but I'm also, as a result, I'm not afraid to challenge them if I'm, if I'm hearing vague. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I am oriented less about data, personally. My analytical is like 24 for me. I don't care about data. Um, and more about the human side of it, right? So, yeah. but, I understand, and I'm an engineer by degree, which is even funnier. Um, uh, I understand the importance of that proof. Right? So we're going to need both. And I, what I, what most businesses do though is they measure everything to death. Mm -hmm. They don't focus on the human side of it. And right. the boys wanted to win the state championship, and that was this much of what needed to be done, and the rest <laughs> of it was all this human stuff, right? So, um, but I do think it's important to uh, be have the confidence and courage you have to and i said this at the clifton strength summit know your craft really really well you know i see on the facebook called the coach daily does anybody have i have to do a presentation tomorrow does anybody have a presentation i'm like what you don't have a presentation that you have worked on for the past three weeks for this right. client yeah. right i mean yeah. so and that will come with time but you can't get that by taking it from someone else that confidence comes through doing practicing your craft with with teams or individuals or in, or in particular areas of your niche, and I encourage that uh, tremendously. I think there's too much of this thin understanding and our or that that then hurts coaches and their ability to have impact. And I feel like I have had that opportunity to develop deep understanding of business, and I'm not afraid to ask questions and probe. Does that help? Yeah, that's great. No, I think it's it's excellent. Uh, one one of the things uh, also when we think about understanding values, right? And so the value for that team when when we think about the sports team, the value was to win the the championship. That's what they wanted to do collectively together. I think in business uh, we have those similar type of events to release this piece. I'll use software again. As a team, we're going to release this piece of software. I just spoke at the University of Maryland to a class in there primary objective was to complete this assignment as a group successfully by this date. And so we started with this goal and value in it. And then each of those team members brought, what is the value you are bringing to this? You know, what, what's your value proposition to this team? And I stole, I told you, I stole that. I will not let, I will not let my team fail uh, in this endeavor was one of the, the statements we made. I think that's super important that in the team, everyone buys into that mm -hmm. concept. Did you, did you find the, you, they said that in the first, you know, you asked them to do that, but how did you see that manifest itself throughout, you know, from the time you left that second intervention yeah. to, to the national championship? Well, you know, I, as you know, I went from there to Vegas, which is another story, but, um, for my work and, and I, when I came back, they had already had a couple of games under the belt and had done extremely well. So I just began to look for behaviors that look crappy, right? People yelling at one another, arguing on the bench. I saw none of that. And then they were crushing out the competition. And I'm like, well, this team doesn't have a problem. 
right? I don't know why they needed me because I see no problems whatsoever. But in reality, of course, all that had been smoothed over. And that, but I, I want to talk about that. I refuse to let you fail exercise. I um, rarely use it in the corporate world because really they don't mean it. And I love to work with companies who, that do mean it. Uh, it is rare that you get two employees in a corporate environment who really mean, I refuse to let you fail. And our, that comes from the joint energy associated with commitment to what success looks like. And mm -hmm. if you don't have that, it, you can talk to your head falls off and you can say that. The energy in the room when they were yelling at one another, I refuse to let you fail, across first the people across the kitty corner, it was enormous. And I knew they meant it. And they meant it because they wanted to win. They... The coach wanted them to become great men. He sees his, the winning to him is besides the point. Uh, for him, the, his mission is to develop great men. He's always like, why be regular Navy when you can be a Navy SEAL? He wants Navy SEALs to come out of his hockey program. So this was all part of what he buys into as well. I didn't know it at the time. That came through interviews later with coach. But um, I, I think... I think one thing about sports is that I will say, and it comes from them having more influencing strengths. There's more energy in the room to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. um, having software people yell at one another, yell at I refuse to let you fail, <laughs> I think might be a little bit more difficult. I work with a medical team that was 47% thinking strengths and only 4% influencing. It's, I have to attack that differently or it's never going to work, right? But for the most part, that kind of energy and commitment is something I see more in the sports world than I do in the corporate world. But I bring it in if they're willing to do it. And I sense they are, I'll have them do it. I had a team, though, that I worked with recently, and the best we could get out of it was I will say hello to someone else in the hallway. Hmm. So. Well, I used it with a software team. And How'd it go? The software teams. We didn't have them shouted at each other. That was, <laughs> <laughs> they typed it to each other. We, they wrote it down. They, it. they, they, it. It. they, they wrote it down. <laughs> a very defined completion date, right? Which is, in this case, it is a pass or fail. It is. It's not the national championship, but this is a very difficult class to get through. And so it, it was a moment we could say to them, hey, this is pass or fail. And are, are you guys going to let your – will you be the one that lets your team down? And, uh, and so that's Good. how – Ja See? Jeremy, I'll throw it back to you as we uh, – Yeah, we no, and, and again, there's so much, so much great content here, Maureen. Again, uh, the book is Destination Unstoppable. Um, where can people find that, Maureen? So you can get it on Amazon. You can get it from my distributor at lulu.com. But if you go to my website, there's always a coupon. I get them weekly for a discount. Oh, cool. So if you go and to my website. you've already sold over 1,000 copies, right? Just in the yes, <laughs> I hit the 1,000 copy mark, which, you know, for me is huge. I'm, I'm not like the most well-known name in the author world um, yet. yet. But uh, yeah, my goal is 10,000 because at that point, as you know, you get the attention of other publishers, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, but I'm very excited to have hit the thousand mark. Thank you. Well, I think it's, uh, I think it says a lot, again, a couple things. One about just the, the gems of insight that you have in here. Again, I love what we just talked about too, that the link to results. Again, it's, it's not just feel good, um, but it really does drive, drive to performance. And again, with this millennial, the millennial research study that Gallup just did, and again, you, you heard it all at the summit, but this whole idea that if, if, the future of successful management is acting like a coach where you're giving the in the moment right. feedback. You're again, not writing something down and saying, we'll talk about this in three months at your next review. Mm -hmm. But if even managers take seriously the, I refuse to let my team members fail. Like maybe it's like right. in the corporate environment. Can you imagine everybody, but the manager goes, I don't want my, this person fail. Right. Maybe that person's success is not on that team. It's somewhere else, but you go, I'm going to help them make that transition to that other team. Yeah. It's, it's a game changer for us. And so it's I think there's so much great insight that you've given us. I thank uh -huh. you so much again, just for how much you've contributed to the conversation to uh, with, with coaches to really help us drive change. And thank you for thank everything. Thank you. Well, you guys are both today, my two favorite friends outside of work. Excellent. Best, best, friend, best engagement. friend outside of work. <laughs> yeah. Builds engagement. <laughs> Builds engagement. That's, that's I refuse matters. to let you uh, fail. I refuse too. to let you fail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's right. Marina, I'll say just as, uh, you know, from, from uh, my reading of the book that I think this is uh, one of those uh, additional textbooks for coaches who really need those practical, you know, you mentioned the, the, the questions we get on Facebook all the time about, you know, how do I, I'm going into this situation, how do I do it or activities yeah. and such. The, the book is loaded with, with, um, I think some really well down and well laid out and thought through concepts and ideas on how to do this. And so I'd encourage coaches from that standpoint, this is one of those textbooks to have 
on your shelf, read it, make some notes, make it your own, right? Make your own statements, make your own coaching proposition, all those things that you do. Don't copy, make it your own. I think it's really, really powerful. Maureen, you can steal, of course, but um, I think it's really powerful when you make that your thing, right? As a coach, wouldn't you say that's one of those? Oh, you're so much, it's authentic and clients see through stuff that isn't authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Make it your own. Do the hard work. Dig in. You've done a lot. You've done a lot of hard work before you did a sports team. You coached hundreds of people, right? All on my free time. That was never my day job, (laughs) which I'm very proud of. No, I I understand that. Not your day job as well. So I called the coach. So we will remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources that we have available to Gallup Strength Center, gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments. If you'd like to be a guest blogger or try out for that team of guest blogging, we'd love to have those submissions to us. Send us your submission into coaching at gallup.com and we'll consider it for the blog and the blog's doing very well. We're coming up on a million views, which is kind of cool for a million of anything is pretty cool. And so the coach's blog is coming up on a million views and we're excited about that. We'd love to see your submissions, send those in. You can also catch the recorded audio and video as well as all the past ones that we've done. The links to our YouTube group or our Facebook group, YouTube page, iTunes and RSS feeds, our iPhone and Android apps, which are getting updated as we speak and all the schedule for theme Thursdays and the the weekly strengths, wisdom programs that we were doing all on the coach's blog. That should really be your one stop resource shop coaching.gallop. If you're interested in becoming a certified strengths coach, we also have a list of all our courses that are available. We've got some great courses coming up uh, around the country and maybe even in your location. A complete list of them is on our courses page, courses.gallop.com. And as you listen to this, we may actually have a link out to the, the registration for our 2017 Clifton Strength Summit. Ooh. So that is coming up as well. I don't have an exact date. It'll be sometime here in September. And so you might want to pay attention to all the things that are going on way earlier than last year. And that team is on fire and ready to go. You might want to start planning that July 17th, 18th, and 19th here in Omaha, Nebraska for the 2017 Clifton Strength Summit coming up. You might want to just pay attention to what's going on. If you found this helpful, we'll ask that you share it. And with that, uh, we'll say goodbye, everybody.